Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Gallegos and I'm here to talk to you about the new product from Richard Garrett, creator of Ultima. It's called Lord British's Shroud of the Avatar uh, Forsaken Virtues, which is the first episode of a multi-episode uh, version of a game that he's trying to fund on Kickstarter. So this is a, a prototype of what he's trying to accomplish. Um, so obviously don't judge it too harshly by the way it looks graphically. Uh, so what you saw there previously was when you're exploring the larger world, you kind of do it from an overhead view like you did in the classic Ultima games, exploring more and more of the map. And then when you find a, like a point of interest, such as like this house with the graveyard, you come into a third person view that's more similar to something, say, Fable or Dragon Age. Um, and then what we're about to see is he's going to get into a little bit of combat. And the thing about combat in this game is that you don't have a skill bar like you would naturally. What you do is you memorize skills. Um, and then it kind of forms a virtual deck of cards. So then, for instance, uh, as your character, so right there, he probably thought his character, in theory, the lower of the game is his character thought about a spinning attack, and then he could do it. So the, the more skills you have memorized, the less often they're likely to come up as the deck sort of shuffles through your moves. So you might want to specialize more as you go through it. Um, or uh, you might want to you know, incorporate other moves in there that you might only want to use very rarely. So I guess the more moves you have, the harder it is for them to come up in the sort of process of memorization. Um, but you're never going to just have the option to use the, the ability you want right then and there at that moment. It's kind of trying to simulate the way that in the heat of a moment in a fight, you might think, man, I'd really like to get a killing blow, but it's not the opportune moment just yet. But it, then later on it might be, or you want to do an underhand slash. Um, so now we're kind of going back into exploring the large overworld of the prototype version here. It's a hex-based sort of world. You can see, although there aren't exactly hex lines, right there you kind of see what's a, a moon gate where you can use to teleport around parts of the world based on where they are with the moon. So now he's going to jump into this uh, gypsy camp. And the first thing that you're going to see him do here is kill these wolves. And if he had talked to the people first, you would see that they're like, man, we need to get out of here because there are wolves. But by killing them, I guess what he's kind of showing here is that Every action you have in Shroud of the Avatar is intended to have a consequence. So by killing these wolves, everyone in the town is going to perceive you better. Now they like the area more, they're going to treat you differently based on your actions. So everything you do should have a consequence is the goal. And that everything you do as far as morality, there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to handle things. It's more that the world just reacts based on what you do and all your choices you do are permanent. There will be some abilities to undo the skill trees that you get yourself involved with, but you'll never be able to undo your your morality choices because that's not the way life works, right? You you have to stick with what you kind of get into. Um, just like the previous games that Richard Garrett's done, a large part of the world is also intended to be interactive. So every NPC you see, you should be able to talk to. You know, uh, every sort of you know carriage you walk up to, there was, they they intend for there to be some form of interactivity. There's also wandering interactions you could do, like that cart there. That could be something as simple as a wandering trader, or it could be a wandering uh, set of bandits. You don't really know until you kind of go and explore it. And exploration is kind of one of the things that Garriott believes has been kind of woefully missing in modern RPGs. You know, you have a lot of quest givers that they put, you know, a big exclamation point over their head, or they lay out the a big old yellow line for you to follow to find exactly where you want to go with your quest. So with Shroud of the Avatar, what he wants to do is if, you know, for instance, right now he'd gotten a quest that says, head to the west till you find a snowy mountain with a town under it, then you would just head west and look for that. You know, you would, you would have a basic, maybe some sort of information in a quest log that would give you an indication of what you're looking for, but it's never going to beat you over the head with it, so that when you find that sort of missing component that you've been looking for, it's much more rewarding. This is actually a closer look at the moon gates. And so actually, as the moon travels around the world in simulation, it'll actually determine where the moon gate is going to take you. So he said when you're out here in these backwater worlds, uh, part of the world, then you'll have to kind of go wherever it's currently linked to, whereas in towns they'll have the ability to actively switch the moon gate so you can travel to a place you specifically want to go. And towns are actually a really important part of it. Uh, there's going to be purchasable real estate for players to buy where they can actually mod the homes that they buy. That's if you connect the game online. It can be played entirely single player, but connecting it online will, will actually enable you to purchase homes, interact with other players in towns, group up with them if you want, and uh, it can actually be where you potentially do PvP. Right now, as we come to the end of the video, you're seeing how the world map kind of evolved. Garriott drew it all by hand, and then his artists and uh, team at the studio and with him advising have actually created that world that he drew by hand in a hex grid into the actual world that you'll be playing uh, in Shroud of the Avatar. 
The plan is to fund it via Kickstarter and it's going to release in a beta form sometime before the end of the year with the final version of the first episode being released next year. For a lot more on Shroud of the Avatar in the future, you can go to IGN.